shout out to Bill Dixon for sending me this post right here. I would like for y'all to get a very good look at this image that you see right here on your screen and begin to shake your head at it as I did before pressing the record button to make this video. It says U.S. awards three hundred and fifty million dollars in research funds to fight the opioid $350 million. Now, how long have black people, or ADOS, whatever you want to call it, been saying that we are owed reparations for the atrocities that our ancestors have had to face since being imported to this establishment we're talking decades of centuries of unpaid wages if you want to call it that and a whole lot more tangibles that we are owed and every time it's brought up to these poly trictions they always got to come with some kind of an excuse as to why we cannot receive them it was long ago we were not slaves they were not slave masters although in some circles if you read between the lines some descendants of the slave masters have received reparations hell slave masters when slavery was in ended which out of slavery that is received reparations for loss of property namely our ancestors they actually paid them because they lost their workers the workers were not paid. They were left to fend for themselves. Interesting, right? Or another one. The country is so broke. The establishment is flat broke. Yet they dug deep into their pockets and found $350 million to award research to, to make extra money on top of the six figures they already make giving these pills and opioids and whatever else to their patients so they can make extra money black people i now can we have now moved down another tier because you know there's tears to this thing so you have white people with white men being first and then white women then you have probably the asians if you want to talk about financials and that can go for Asians that were born and not born here you have the Hispanics, the ones who were born and not born here. So that means you have also documented and undocumented immigrants because they also are funding DACA as well. Remember, Kamala Harris said that she wants to get Congress jobs for members who for people who are part of DACA, meaning Im uh, immigrants that were not even born here and probably are here illegally. She didn't think about us, which baffles my mind as to why anyone would black would support her. But OK, I guess. Then you have us where in most circles, black women would be above black men. But now we have another tier because now we've moved down a little bit more because now they have to put the opioid users. That's almost another tier in itself. Now, I highly doubt that there was this much funding. For when black people were going through the crack epidemic back in the 80s and 90s. And those drugs were dumped into those neighborhoods by the government. Back in the 80s and early 90s. And the effects of it still hold weight to this day. Notice a lot of the crackheads that you see today look like they're of a certain age now i know that crack will you know a usage of crack will age you but some of them probably were victims of the effects of the crack from back then and then you have the children that were born out of the womb of a woman that was on crack they called them crack babies and we still have not come up with a term to call the children born from the womb of a woman who's on meth or various other opioids but we've thrown out some ideas 
but none of them really have stuck to the wall, if you get what I mean. So they got all this money to help fund something that is not going to stop. And the main reason they're doing it is because it is affecting white people. It might be affecting some other groups of people, but let's be real here. The majority of the people who are on these opioids are white. Most of the people who are benefiting from it are most definitely white. Whether they are the ones running the pharmaceutical companies or the ones who are the dealers. I've said all this so far and I haven't even gotten into the article yet. I'm drawing all of this just from the title. They don't want to get it's amazing. These politicians didn't oppose this. I didn't hear not one politician who was against ADOS getting reparations tangibles speak out against this. And there's no really need to wonder as to why that is. It's pretty damn obvious. I'm going to go ahead and read this article and see what else they're talking about. U.S. health officials are giving $350 million to researchers in four states hit hardest by the deadly opioid plague. Now, listen to that. Four states. Only four states. I bet you Ohio is one of them, but let's see if they if they'll list them. The study announced Thursday aims to cut overdose deaths by 40 percent over three years in local communities grappling with misuse of addictive drugs. Researchers will study evidence based techniques for fighting addiction and overdose, such as medication based treatments like methadone and criminal justice reforms. The grants from the National Institutes of Health will go to the University of Kentucky, Boston Medical Center, New York City's Columbia University. And I guess correctly, Ohio State University. Government officials across the U.S. have been fighting a multi-decade epi- I'm sorry, epidemic of opioid addiction, which includes not only prescription painkillers, but also illicit drugs like heroin and fentanyl. Deaths linked to those drugs rose to a record 48,000 in 2017. Oh, boo fucking who but i knew that ohio would fall in there because like i said before if y'all are new to my channel that doing these opioid stories is actually one of the ways that my channel blew up and ohio was always usually the one that was the t the main i guess you could say hub i always call ohio the hub for heroin or the hub for opioid overdose the op the plague and whatnot it's basically the proxy you know how like Whenever Lane Street Media likes to say stuff about black on black crime, but they always like to mention Chicago because they're using Chicago as a proxy. Ohio is a proxy, but in a way, it kind of speaks for itself because the numbers are definitely there. And these are affected in white areas, might I add. Now, we know New York is a mixed bag, but it's affecting the white residents. Ohio is a mixed bag, but it's affecting mostly white people. Kentucky, Boston straight up white I don't feel nothing for any one of those places whatsoever but I think it's very hypocritical that they have this money set aside for them but when we ask for something or not so much ask but we demand because at this point we're no longer asking we're just demanding that we get what's owed to us they got all the excuses in the world as to why we cannot receive what is owed to us and see the thing is we did not choose our ancestors did not choose to come over here our ancestors did not choose to be enslaved our ancestors did not choose to be beaten and tortured and raped and stolen from our families and separated they didn't choose that however these individuals on these drugs chose that life they chose to use, abuse, and deal those drugs. So the fault of them overdosing or the fault of them getting in jail for dealing is on them. No one held a gun to their head and told them to do these drugs. No one held a gun to their head and told them to deal these drugs. They chose under their own cognizance to do that. 
yet we are asking for too much when it comes to reparations. And see, they probably will not blow a story like this up in the media as far as like a CNN or a Fox News. We know they ain't going to touch it or MSNBC. This kind of story right here is probably only going to be regulated to the Internet where a lot of people won't find it unless you go looking for it. None of this even remotely sh um, shocks me. I'm almost wanting to question why didn't they start doing this sooner? They might have gotten a head start, but they waited and let it fester out of control. That three hundred fifty million dollars probably won't even be enough to help them curb this uh, plague. And you know what? I hope that this is money wasted. I hope that this actually backfires. And something tells me that it will, because everything they have tried up to this up until this point to try to downgrade this play, everything from saying that it's not as bad as it seems or is a lot of people uh, getting off opioids or is the Narcan is working. All of that has backfired on them every last time. And I have a feeling that this one will be no different. And the one after that would be no different. And the one after that, and the one after that, and the 10 that come after that. So I think that they are wasting their time. I say just ride the wave and let the chips fall where they lay. Because isn't that what y'all told black people? After all, we didn't get this special treatment. We got thrown in jail. Our people got thrown in jail. They didn't get rehab. They didn't go to safe injection sites. We didn't get that uh, uh, special treatment. It was only one option for us. The dealer went to jail and so did the user. We didn't even get PSAs or infomercials. I realize every time I go to the movies now, they always got to show some kind of infomercial dedicated to that damn opioid plague. It makes me sick. Sometimes when I'm watching television, on certain networks, they'll throw one in there and they'll throw the sad music behind it as if I'm supposed to give a damn. And I don't. I don't. I got a very cold spot in my chest cavity where my heart is whenever these type of stories come up. So damn cold. <laughs> a damn, the damn dragon off a of Game of Thrones couldn't knock that down. Those of you who watch the show know exactly what I'm talking about. But good luck with their uh, research funds. I mean, I don't think y'all are going to get much out of it. They didn't really give them a deadline either. So that shows you right there that they don't know how long this is going to take. They are going to blow through these funds trying to trying to fix this thing even though there have been numerous articles and studies put out there saying that this plague is not going anywhere anytime soon as far as it fizzling out the crack epidemic however did fizzle out eventually you might sell some people still doing it but it's not as heavy as it was and they took the consorted effort to put those drugs there these drugs they went in search of those and they can't get off of them for shit. And you know what's so funny? When I was doing the, when I started doing these type of stories, I'm thinking that this was a time when the drugs were on the rise. But that wasn't the case. They were around already for a minute. For years before I started doing commentaries on them. It's just that now it became more popular to talk about because it got out of control. They thought that they could control it and they could not. Well, I think it's too little too late for them. I don't care how much money they throw behind some research to try to uh, get this down. It's not going anywhere. And you know what? As long as it stays in their community. I hope it doesn't leave. Y'all let me know what you think about this down in the comments and I will talk to you in the next one.